No matter how you define yourself as a witch, at some point you will want to record your own spells, magical recipes, correspondences, or personal rituals in a way you can easily access the information. You have seen me use the same Book of Shadows many times here on my channel, the same book I have used for over 20 years in my personal practice. I love it, but it is time to make some necessary changes and improvements to it, and I invite you to come along as I share its magical transformation. Greetings. Whether you are new to witchcraft and you want to make your very, very first Book of Shadows, or you are someone like me who has been using the same one for many years and find that it is not, it doesn't serve you as it should. Maybe it's, in my case, it's it's full for one thing, but also it has some, it has some uh, things taking up room in the book that I really don't want to keep in this book anymore, that I don't want to, I don't really use anymore for whatever reason. Um, I want to, I have, it's time for me to make a new book. I'd like to offer you a few points to consider before you dive in. <laughs> it's it's a big job. It's a big job. I'm not going to kid you. It is a big job. And I have to spend many, many hours on YouTube looking through, watching people do flip throughs of their Book of Shadows. And I do have to say before I go any further, I am really in awe. There is so much creativity. The people have, are so creative. It's so wonderful to see so many wonderful ideas and they share them freely also um, the time alone that it takes to create something that is, is especially some of the ones that I've looked at that are just immense immense projects I don't know how many hours that of work has gone into those I really have been awe of those people there's really one major point that stands out to me among all others and that is let's define what we're talking about a book of shadows. I don't care whether you call it a book of shadows or a book of secrets or a grimoire or something else. Um, I want you to think for a minute of what this book actually is. This is actually one of your witch's tools that we talk about. Just like an athame, just like um, maybe your altar stone or your or your candles or, or whatever you use, your incenses, your oils. Those are tools that enable us to do, to, to practice our craft to the best that we can, right? Okay, so your Book of Shadows is really something that is very, very personal to you. It is personal to you. My Book of Shadows and your Book of Shadows are not the same thing, okay? My Book of Shadows is, a Book of Shadows is the equivalent, let's say, to a recipe book. If you are a cook or your mother was a cook or grandmother was a cook, you might be in possession of a handwritten book that of recipes, tried and true recipes that have been used by your family for many, many years. You know, everybody likes them. You have made special notes on them so you know maybe what dishes to use or or um, who likes it and who doesn't like it. Um, if it's good frozen or if you can make it ahead. You know, we the kind of things that cooks really care about. Okay. I have hundreds of cookbooks probably if you count my medieval cookery books and um, collected books that I've collected from like just old book cookbooks from um, like my grandmother and and community little community books have been put together and and some of my favorite um, contemporary cooks I have some of their books but I have my own handwritten cookbooks that I use tried and true family favorites that is what your book of shadows is for i can't say that enough times because i have just witnessed people with pay 500 600 700 800 pages that are not even done in the book of shadows that is so thick and so heavy that they can hardly pick it up and they're not even done because they're putting everything but the kitchen sink in their book of shadows Every bit of information that they have found in the universe is going into their book of shadows. I want to show you something that I've showed you before, and I'm going to show you one more time because I don't think you saw it. <laughs> this is only one example. 
but this is a grimoire for the Green Witch. Now, a lot of people ask for book recommendations, and I don't usually give book recommendations, but this is one book I do recommend, particularly for people that are starting out, because this has it all, baby. This has it all. It has sample rituals. If you have never done a ritual and you want to do a ritual for a Sabbath or a ritual for an Esbitt or whatever, or if you want to consecrate your tools or if you want to initiate or you want to do those kind of things, it has different rituals for different... Um, it has um, also... Uh, it has some spells. It has a lot of spells in here um, for different things. Spells um, using color coins on color correspondences, herbal spells, it has planetary associations, it has divination using numbers or runes or herbs and plants or stones and crystals or amulets or, oh my, so many things. It has so many things. It has lists and charts everywhere of everything you could possibly want. It has runes. It has glossary of terms if you're not sure of the terms. It has totems. It has stones and what they're correspondences are it has um just names of deity um different kind of uh um blessings and it has some songs it has all kinds of spells i keep finding more and more spells it has so many things in here it has herbal tea recipes it has um uh for all kinds of different things. It has symbolism for divination, like if you have dreams, you dream of dreams, or you might want to do tea reading. It has, what could the symbols stand for? Okay, this is a very valuable tool. This only has, by the way, 345 about pages in it, but it has just about everything. It's a really wonderful reference book if you want it in a book rather than having to go all over the internet, which I know you can do too, okay? The, piece, the reason I bring this up is we don't need to in, reinvent the wheel, people. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to take everything that we've ever learned or any bit of information and copy all this into a book of shadows that is going to be meant for a personal use. There's nothing wrong with taking information from here and including it in your book of shadows, but your book of shadows should have things that you have used, spells that you have used, personally used, or you know somebody who's personally used it and share it with you and you know it's a good spell and you want it. Okay, that's good. Correspondence is herbs that you actually use. If you don't ever intend to use that herb, you don't have access to it, it's just not something you would use, or why would you include it in your book of shadows? I was watching one book, one uh, flip through, and I know they meant well, and I know they meant to be authentic for whatever reason, and I'm not trying to criticize, but they had a recipe in their Book of Shadows, a remedy in their Book of Shadows, for rattlesnake bite. Now, I'm being, I'm being flippant, and I don't mean to be, but I want you to think about it. If you got bit, see, if you know somebody how, who was bitten by a rattlesnake, you wouldn't go, let me get my Book of Shadows. I think I have a remedy for that in here. You would not. If you had access to medical attention, you would get that person to medical, for medical attention immediately. If you were in the Wild West, here in the United States, you would have probably taken your knife out of your pocket and slashed that bite and sucked the poison out yourself, the venom out yourself, and spit it to try to save that person's life. You have immediate need if you are bitten by a rattlesnake. You don't have time to look up a book of, in your book of shadows. Oh, I bet I have something in my book of shadows about that. That's like, that's nuts, man. That's really nuts when you think about it. Okay? So, I want to just say, be very, be very careful what you choose and put in your book it because those things take up room that's the only reason i say it you can put anything you want in here but just remember you have a limited amount of space and when you look in your book of shadows you want to be able to find things so you can use them and i have shown you in the past the difficulties that i have with my own because i don't have an index things aren't in alphabetical order whatever and as much as you try to do that you might not be able to keep it that way because it's just it's really hard to do and is that really what you want from a book of shadows? I'm not, it's not really aesthetically pleasing. Everything's ordered in columns and numbers and tabs. And it just, you know, I had post-its sticking here for different reasons, which I rip out every time I can because I just don't want to look down at my book and see post-its sticking out of it. It's, this is a magical tool. It's a magical tool.
and I like it to look magical and feel magical and it, that helps to that helps me um, feel magical and in order to, to perform magically to manifest my desires okay so I don't want to harp on it I feel like I'm harping I don't want to do too much of that but I do want just please don't turn me off let me give you some points to consider okay and the first point is be specific what is going to go in your book of shadows I also saw somebody take a tarot deck and glue a tarot card every tarot card from that deck into their book of shadows and then pretty much write the meanings taken like from the little white book in the that comes with the deck and wrote, wrote, wrote those into the into the book um that takes up a lot of room number one number two i can as a tarot reader justify anybody gluing down tarot cards in their book shadows that kind of annoys me i, I you've seen me doing tarot um You've seen me do tarot things in my tarot journal, and I have taken my tarot journal out of the, I've taken it out of, out of uh, my bullet journal, taken it out of my bullet journal, and made my own tarot journal. You've seen me do that. I did some, I did some uh, videos on that. But these are these are images. These aren't cards. These are images, because first of all, card is very thick. These are just images, computer images that I've glued on here. But also, um, they're going to take up too much room, first of all. And you want to be able to write on it. You want to be able to lay flat your pages to lay, lay flat. Okay. So I've taken my tarot out of my bullet. It never was in my book of shadows. Um, using divination with tarot cards, different divination things, or, or maybe specific divination readings that you want to add in your book of shadows. That's, that's different. But just putting every card in the book, time consuming and probably not necessary. Another thing I have done is I have, you saw me make this in another video. This is my herbal grimoire, okay. It's my herbal grimoire. It is, there we go. I have different I recipes for tinctures, uh, which includes and teas and tonics and tipples and things. I have salves and, and um, you know remedies for things okay and then I have um, brews and potions okay and then at the very end the reason I have it in here is because I have images of the if I wanted to forage in the wild or find some I have access to some of these natural herbs and flowers and what they're good for so I can identify them and know the, the, the um, uses for them I have it all in one place. I can carry this with me when I go. Okay. But this is, of course, my culinary herbs, things that I would use for teas or things that I would use for medicinal purposes like tinctures or salves or those kind of things. We're going to find a lot of these in here too. But this is their magical uses. This is things like I want to make you a cup of tea. This is, I want to make you, I want to make a spell, use a spell, a protection spell, and I'm going to use some of the same things that I found in here, and I'm going to use them here. So that takes some, I've taken the tarot out, I've taken my herbal grimoire out, and I'm left, what am I left with? I'm left with my spells, I'm left with my herbal correspondences, my, you know, my oils, my recipes for oils, my, um, maybe information you know things for uh, maybe about my stones um, different kind of things for you know recipe here what I'm looking looking through to see what I can find incense ones that I make recipes for incense cones those kind of things but also I had in here a lot of rem I had a lot of um, rituals in the beginning because remember when I started this my husband and I were um, sole practitioners we 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 had our own private thing. And then we covened, we joined a coven, and we still maintain, we still maintain our practice and we still do today. But our rituals, we either went to public ritual before that or we went to, with our coven, we had regular rituals every month with the coven. 
And now we have a high drop from that coven and we are still, we have another coven and we have rituals in there. So I really have a book of shadows for me and my husband. I have a book of shadows for the first, my first um, circle that I, that I covened with, which I'm still a member of that. If I wished to circle with them, I'm sure I could. Um, the, the coven that I'm active with now, we, we're building our own book of shadows, things that are just appropriate for this coven. We don't share outside of the coven. The first coven, we did not share it outside of there. And Joe and I did not share outside of our own practice what was in here. They were, they were private. They were for our use only. Okay. Now, I don't need to keep rituals in here. I might keep a few things in here, especially some things I want to do, especially spell work on, on, for certain um, at certain times and Sabbaths or, or, or um, Esbets, but I don't want to do, I don't want to take up a lot of room with texts from rituals that I perform with other people that are going to be elsewhere. So if I take these things out of here, I don't have to have them in my new book of shadows. I don't have to copy what, was, what I have here and put it everywhere. This is something, you know, you don't have to have 13 books. But you don't have to have everything in a book if you don't need it. That's what I'm trying to say. I, my life is maybe a little more complex with you. My practice is a little more unique because I do have groups that I, I do things on my own and I also do things with a, with a group of people. Okay? So maybe that is, that's where we're maybe a little different. Maybe you only do magical herbs. Maybe you don't ever do, and some teas, but you don't ever really make or other things. To a big, to a large extent, you don't forage or you don't think, do things like that. So you could probably just use your book of shadows for that. But the other thing is, I can take this out with me when I go out on the bus. I don't want to take my book of shadows out with me. This is private. This stays in a place in my parlor here. This is where it goes. This is where it always is. It's not for public use. It's for my use. It's not for anybody else's use. So I wouldn't be likely to take that out on a trip somewhere. Okay. I'm going on and on, but I think you get what I'm talking about. Okay. So my first point, <laughs> my first point in summation would be there's no need to reinvent the wheel. If you have something in one place, you don't necessarily need to copy it and put it in another place. If you're lucky enough to have something like this, and I will link how you can get this book if you would, and I don't know anything about this woman, and it's just really one of the best published grimoires that I have seen. And notice that she calls it Grimoire for the Green Witch, a complete book of shadows. Even she um, interchanges the, the, the uh, titles. So you can call it whatever you want. I know some people have a strong definition of what one is and what the other is. For me, for my purposes and my husband's purposes, this is our book of shadows or a book of secrets and this is our herbal grimoire. Okay. Some, some things go in both books, but mostly this is for um, culinary use or medical use for healing. This is for magical use. It's for magical use, mostly. And this is for tarot. <laughs> okay, I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Another point to consider is size. I have seen some books, Book of Shadows or Grimoires, being shared here on YouTube that are so big, they're hardly, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm questioning how they use them or what they use them for. I think in the beginning of this video, I showed you some clips of me using this Book of Shadows and there's a couple things. I like it because it's small. I can tuck it in. Um, I can use it. I can hold it in my hand if I want to. But I like to, you know, if I'm working on a, on a spell or a, um, or if I make it mixing up oils or whatever, do it will lay, it will lay flat and it doesn't take up all my, my whole table. I can have it here to the side while I'm working over here. So that was really important to me to have something that I could, um, that I, that I could handle well. Okay. The size was important. The fact that it will lay flat was really important. And I had sewn the pages. These, well, this is a book my husband made. But the pages are sewn in just like in this, pretty close to the same style that I showed you when I sewed the pages in my new, when I was redoing my journals. Not this one, but the old ones. I showed you the pamphlet stitch that I was using. Um, 
that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a variation of that when I, of that kind of a thing, a little different when I sew my new pages. But um, I really like it to lay flat, and it it it's aesthetically pleasing. Okay, it's aesthetically pleasing. It a book. It to me, this is a leather bound book. It's it's leather. The texture is lovely to hold in my hand. Um, the sewn pages I really like. I know people have them. They put those, use those post or screw posts. I'm not sure they call their screws or posts. That a lot of uh, photo albums have them that you can make it thicker. You can add pages. They like those because you, they can take them apart and move the pages around if they want to. But I'm really wondering how many people do that because is it really necessary to have the ability to do that? And for the same reason, a lot of people use a three ring binder. That to me just doesn't read Book of Shadows. And I'm not trying to, um, I don't, hope I'm not being insulting. I don't mean to do that. For some people it doesn't matter. And that's wonderful. But for my aesthetic, I just like it to be, I like it to be a book. <laughs> I like it to be a book that, um, I learn where things are in the book. Because it's, again, it's private for me. It's private for me. It's not necessarily anybody else has to be able to find things. I have to find things. And in that in that light, again, I don't use an index or I won't be numbering my pages or using a glossary or tabs. People have tabs. I don't want just anybody to walk up to my thing and go, oh, a binding spell and open up the book and read my binding spell. No, not that a lot of people would find it, but you understand my point. This is, it's for my use. Nobody else has to be able to find it. Okay, so how do I how do I find it? Well, I have some I have some ways. I have some ways of doing that. In this book, when we first started this book, we were doing rituals in the beginning, and I started color coding. And I think I mentioned this to be before that I had things during a ritual. Let's see if I can find one. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I have green ink, red ink, and black ink on these. And the reason being, um, the black ink cores were actions. And then there was a green ink, there was a red ink, there was blue ink sometimes. It, girl, green was for girl when the girl, <laughs> green meant for me to read, uh, it was something I said or read. Blue was something my husband said or read, okay. When we said it together, it was indicated that it was together by the color. Everything was by color, okay. And that was why we could glance down and we could say when we were doing a ritual, we knew it was him, or knew it was me, or we do it was something we did together. Okay. Now, as far as other things, I kept the colors up when I started. What kept going, because I noticed the colors helped me catch my eye. When I saw colors, it caught my eye and I, my attention, because for to, for me to find things in here, I was always leaving through, leaving through, leaving through. Now I did use ribbons. I you saw that I had these, um, you know, just satin ribbons that I would put in there when I was doing something special that I would mark the places that I wanted to see in here. But still, it is a lot of searching and it is hunting. And that's another reason, one, that I don't want a thousand pages. <laughs> but also, um, that's part of the aesthetic for me. That's part of the process. Opening the book, running your hands along the pages, turning the pages, and searching for what it is you want. And locating it. Ah, there it is. And I take my ribbon and I mark that page, and there it is. And now I'm ready to go. If the page is actually blows closed or whatever gets shut, I, have, I can find it, because I have marked it with the ribbon. I'll have to do it again. I like that aesthetic, okay? So in my new one, but it's gonna have a little different, my new one's gonna be a little more, a little different, because um, we're not gonna have those rituals and that kind of thing, and I don't know if I'm gonna do color coding in the, the fonts, I mean, in my, in my texts or not. But one thing I can do is make a decision how I'm going to do the writing. I don't want printed pages. I'm going to have handwritten pages. So I have, I'm making a decision. I was talking about it today with my husband. Do I want to have use cursive writing? Because I, I kind of like cursive writing. I don't do it very often. But I know it's something that's a dying art that people much younger than me might not even know how to do or even how to read. This kind of gives me, I kind of like that. So I might be writing my spells at least in cursive or I'm not sure. 
And then when I do, um, I think my headings or titles or things I want to stand on the page, I will probably do differently, probably in some kind of a, a printed, a printing, some kind of decorative printing perhaps. This items I will probably just print. But, you know, directions, whatever, a lot of the things, a lot of the text, I will probably use cursive. I like that. That gives me, so when I glance on the page, if it's printed, it's a list. I can see it right away. If it's cursive, I have to stop and I have to read. I have to read. So that's a little different, okay? Images. I already talked about images. There's another point to consider before you dive into your project. We all want images. We want something to look at that's pretty. And in this book, that's one change I want to make in this book because there's no images. Very few. I have a few little sketches for, for, um, for a certain couple spells, I have a few little little diagrams or whatever. But for the most part, I don't have any images, and I really want images. I love those. I love to see that. So I have, I've I've been doing a lot, getting a lot of inspiration, again, on YouTube. Um, for... Um, how I'm going to put in images. And I don't want to, the mistake that I see a lot of people making is gluing stuff, everything in, gluing on top of pages. Every time I take a page and I glue a picture on the top of a page from another piece of paper that I cut out and glue on the page, I've pretty much doubled the thickness. If I do that on every page, I'm gonna double the thickness of my book. I'm going to find a lot of bumpy pages that I'm going to be writing on if I'm writing over things that are glued in that's something to consider. So I'm looking at some other transfer options of images. Um, of course, you can draw them if you're an artist. I'm not very artistic. I'm creative, but I'm not artistic. So I'm interested in trying some of the things that I have seen. So I can glue some things in, certainly I will, but like to glue them all in is kind of, is a little overkill for me. Um, but I see people doing a lot of really fun transfer images mostly in the people of the junk journaling community. I went to the junk journal community here on YouTube and got some ideas on my paper. I wanted to just use something that was easy for me to acquire, something that was, in, you know, not inexpensive, but, and not too thick, you know, good weight that would stand up um, in my journal. And I found that just plain copy paper worked really well and they, and I learned how to dye it using some different substances. My first dye bath is nothing more than very strong black tea. I believe I used six tea bags and a quart of water, which I brought to a boil on the stove and then simmered until I liked the color. I removed the tea bags and allowed the tea to cool slightly so I wouldn't burn my hands. This old wash tub is a bit small for the job and also had a slightly uneven bottom. So I needed to move the tea about to make sure the paper was evenly saturated. The paper didn't take too long to achieve the color I wanted, maybe 15 or 20 minutes at the most. For my second dye bath, I used the outer dry papery skins from a few yellow onions and one or two red onions. I used the same process, but improved the method by replacing the old wash tub with a small new litter pan I picked up at the dollar store. It worked great, and you can see the beautiful dye the onion skins produced. This method was a bit more hands-off, as I didn't need to manipulate the paper in the dye solution.
Again, the paper achieved a desire shade I wanted, which was beautiful rather quickly. The paper, having sat in the solution for a while, was very fragile and it was a little difficult to remove from the solution. I did have a few problems in the beginning before I got used to handling the paper, but I, you know, I, I had a few tears along the edges where I was handling it. I wasn't too concerned because this was going to be trimmed later, um, but I eventually, after I tried to do several sheets alone, I found that as the paper was lying in stacks, a little small stacks within the dye solution, I found that it would be easier perhaps to just remove that little stack of paper and let it dry, partially dry at least. Um, and by doing it, getting it to partially dry, it would, it would be a little more, um, a little less fragile. And I would be able to maybe um, pick it up then and move it. And that's what I did. And you can see some places here where the paper looks a little lighter in color. Those are places that are dry and you can see it lifting from the table. Finally, I simmered the skins and pits from probably four avocados. Once I got as much color as I could out of them, I strained the uh, pits and skins out of the pot and I added some baking soda, hoping that this would deepen the color of my dye solution. And boy, did I get a beautiful result from this. As soon as I put the paper in the dye bath, I could see a beautiful pink tinge on the paper. You might not be able to see it, my lighting is really not that great, but um, I'll show it to you when the paper is dry and hopefully you'll be able to see it then, especially when we compare it to the other paper that I've dyed before this. I wanted to show you the, what happened when I, my paper was dry, the difference that I got. Um, I didn't see when I was dying them that big of a difference, but the ones here, the first ones that I did, I dyed with the tea with just black tea and they came out like sort of brown tan really like you would expect and it's very nice i under i'm going to try again with some green tea on some other paper because i think the green tea comes out um gray more gray i don't know but i like it you can't really tell in the light i'm sorry but some are darker than others they have interesting marbling and and staining on them i really like and then I didn't think there was going to be much difference. I didn't divide it here by paper so I can see. I didn't think there was going to be much difference, but the ones that I dyed with onion skins, and they were mostly yellow onions, and I had a few um, red onion skins in there too. They came out really pretty yellow. Um, if you want to compare, and I really can see a difference in my light. I don't know if you can, but in my light, um, Maybe if I show you this, like darker ones, they're really different. These are the tea, and this is the onion skin. So these are more warmer, um, yellowy, golden tones. I like these a lot. And then the biggest, the best surprise, I think, was with the avocado skins and seeds. Really got some pink tones. They're really, it looks very pink. I can show you compared to the yellow, pink. <laughs> I got pink from avocado, who, who would ever, ever think that? It was because I added a little bit of the um, baking soda in when it was, before I put the paper in, I stirred in some baking soda, which changed the pH and changed it to get some lovely pinks. So I was really excited about that. I can't wait to see the effects. Now I'm getting some, this is small size paper. I'm going to have to, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but I'm going to have to do some alterations to this size paper to get the journal, the size for my journal that I want, the size for my book of shadows that I want. But I'll tell you that in a minute. And also, um, 
I want to say that I'm also going to be trying some coffee dyeing, but I'm going to do that with some paper. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to get some larger size paper a little bit later today and try to do some coffee dyeing on that and see what effects I get with coffee. So I'm very excited to see what I get. This is the fun part of being creative, just trying it out and see what happens. I've received a lot of good ideas. I found a, good, a lot of good suggestions in the junk journal community for ways to um, transfer my images. And I promise you that I will be sharing those with you, the ones that I've used, as I experiment with them and try them. My pages are pretty much going to be done. A lot of the pages are going to be done outside of my journal. I will work so I can just work the page and then I will um, be adding, if it, sewing in the completed pages into my journal. So I will probably construct signatures first. I will fold the signatures, complete the pages of the signatures, and then I will work on those before I actually sew them into the book. So if I do it, if I don't like the way it's done, I can transfer, I can change the page before it's sewed in. I don't have to worry about, you know, trying to cover it up or trying to fix mistakes. I can get it as nicely as I, as I want it before it goes into the book. But there's a lot of imagery, tra image transfer, using all kinds of different media that I'm really anxious to give a try to. And when I, each one of those, when I try them, I will show you. And those are things that don't really change the thickness of the page. So I will use those as many times as I can. I want to caution you, when you're going down the road of the junk journals, a lot of people have done that with their Book of Shadows. And it's lovely, except I want you to keep in mind that our journals are, a tool, or again, our Book of Shadows is a tool. It has to be able to be used. And if it is just fussy with all kinds of um, ephemera in there that doesn't really have anything to do with anything, like a lot of junk journals are loaded with ephemera that is just pretty or aesthetically they like it or whatever, it's interesting. But they don't have, some of them don't even have very much room for journaling. So. Um, we don't want that. We don't want to fall down that that hole <laughs> when we're looking for our book of shadows because we really want the book of shadows to be something that is absolutely used, and we can we can actually see the writing is what's important, or the imagery is what's important, the spell, the you know the information there is what is important. Okay, so we want to be very practical, but the aesthetics is wonderful. We can really acquire some wonderful aesthetics using some of the suggestions that I've learned in that community, and I will want to share that with you. Another thing that I found that I really, really loved was they have a lot of really fun ways to hide things. You know, we want to hide certain things. Maybe there's spells, like tuck, there's some interesting little secret pockets, ways of making secret pockets or, or hidden fold tuck-ins or, or little windows that really inspired me to kind of do some of those things with some of my spell pages, etc. So I'm going to be very, in the, in the weeks to come, I'm, as I do them, I'm going to be sharing those um, with you. I will try to build it into a playlist as I go so you can refer back to it at any time they really need it. Finally, I want to say that I went around in a circle. <laughs> went around in a circle when I was choosing my book that I was going to use. I was torn between do we start again and make a whole new book like my husband built this with you know, using the book board and all that and and covering, making the cover, etc. Finding some good leather, making the cover, whatever. Do I want to take another, do I want to take an old book and gut it and maybe cover it? We just done a lot. Again, in the junk journal community, we've seen that. And then I went down the road. Finally, my thing became, my problem became what when I was talking about paper. I showed you the paper I used, and in this book, the pages are, um, in size, the page that we look at, the initial page, is about 6 by 9, 6 by 9, so it's actually a 9 by 12 page folded in half, not 8 and half by 11, but 9 by 12, actually 9 by 12 folded in half, which gives a 6 by 9 fold, okay? I like the size, and I kept saying, can I find a book that's that size that I could do that? Because I can get 6x9 paper, and I can um, 
use that because I thought, first of all, if I took a, a regular eight and a half by 11 and folded that in half, it makes, it only makes, a, it's, it makes a small page, just a little bit bigger than, than what goes in here. It's, it's a little small for what I wanted to use it for. I want to have enough room on my page to write. But then when I use a full, if I use a full page, eight and a half by 11, and hinge them together somehow, that's a little bit too big of a page. I don't really want to journal that big. So I found that this size was perfect. I kept coming back to the idea, you can see where I'm going, that this is perfect. It's the perfect size. I love the size. Um, I love the thickness. I love the amount of pages I have in here. I love the cover. I love that my husband made it. I love that. I love that we have used this forever and a lot of this information is going to be transferred over. Okay, but there's a lot of wear and tear on this book. This book is well over 20 years old. And there's just some things, the corners are kind of messed up. The end paper, there's really no end papers because he did it in the medieval style. He just glued it up, but he didn't put any end papers. There's some improvements we can do on it to make it a little sturdier. Some of the stitching is loose. Oh, what am I thinking, I said. How about I just get this book? I'm gonna just cut the pages out of here really easily done now he has it he has it done i don't think you can tell but there are five ridges along the spine and we see that in a lot of old books that's actually because there's a, a jute cord that is glued under here um that is the, the pages are the pages are adhered to, uh, tied sewn to that those cord that cording that's how they're attached and so we always see that in the cover, and I don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to bind this in a way that we still see the spine as it is, and I will bind them, I'll show you how I bind them, sew them to a binding inside. But I think we're going to be able to just take these pages out really easily, read you the pages, and takes the cover up, and it's going to be, it's going to be so snazzy. Oh, it's going to be snazzy. It's going to be beautiful. I'm really excited about it. So we went full circle, we came, here we go again. I went all over the place, days and days, trying to look for a book, trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it. And those eight and a half by 11 pages that I showed you early, earlier, we're gonna use those and I'm going to make some, what in the journaling community, the junk journal community would call, they're gonna Frankenstein pages, which kind of is interesting, like Frankenstein's monster built, built out of uh, body parts of people. These Frankenstein pages are going to be built out of papers put together to make a bigger page. And there's some really fun ways to do that, which I'm excited to try. So some of my pages will be that. And I will share with you how I do that. So there you go. It's an adventure. It's an adventure. And isn't this a good time to start an adventure? So I'm coming up the new year. It's a new time to make a project. It's the dark of the year. A lot of us are going to be tucked inside for some months. Some of you with cold weather and snow and some of you with um, <laughs> in the hot, hot weather in the Southern Hemisphere, you might be too hot for you to go outside, so you're inside with your air conditioning or whatever. Or if you live where I do, maybe hopefully, 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 hopefully we get rainy. So we can have some of those rainy days to tuck inside and work on a project. I'm counting on it. I'm counting on it. So I'm going to bring you along on my project. And um, I hope it's something, I hope it's something that you will enjoy. Oh, I talked so much today. I'm very sorry, but I'm I'm eager. I'm excited. I can't wait to start. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rebecca. As always, I wish you blessings.